does 205 or Jamal Hill, does that, is it a bit too soon for that? It sounds like you guys have sort of <clears throat> unfinished business at middleweight. Hello, I'd hear you wait. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. In an interview with Submission Radio, the coach of middleweight champion Israel Adesanya, Eugene Behrman, said that his next move could be to go for Jamal Hill, which means that Adesanya would try to fight at 205 pounds again. Chael Sonnen has spoken about it and says that, although coaches should respect each other, Eugene receives a lot of hate for being wildly arrogant and dumb as rocks. I try to stay away. Eugene Behrman gets a lot of heat. When he comes across as a combination of wildly arrogant and dumb as rocks. And he does, it's, this is true. It, but Sonnen recalls the past and what happened the last time Adesanya tried to fight at light heavyweight. It didn't work. Let's hear it from Chael himself. Do we need to come out and explain to him how his protege already did this? It, took, it didn't work. Like, do we need to explain to him what a beautiful and great and coveted position that he's in as king of a division? Do you think Adesanya can beat Jamal, or will history repeat itself? Let us know in the comments. MMA community reacts to Holloway win and Barbosa knockout. Max Holloway, the former featherweight champion, utilized his extensive fighting experience to claim a unanimous decision victory over Arnold Allen, effectively ending the British 12-fight winning streak. Despite his opponent's impressive momentum at the beginning of the bout, Holloway's fight IQ and expert timing in managing distance allowed him to dominate the younger fighter. Several professional fighters took to Twitter to express their reactions to the impressive match. Dustin Poirier said, Max is smooth and patient, a true veteran of our sport at the highest level. Aljamain Sterling, cheer for Max. Max is still that guy. Marvin Vittori supported Allen for his performance. Hell of a fight, keep your head up, you'll be back. Alex Volkanovsky, enjoy the great fight. Max showing great fight IQ and experience. High level fight, well done lads. Wonderboy tweeted. Max took that in my opinion, he is masterful out there, totally in his element, born for it. Bell Al Muhammad cheer for Holloway. Blessed is back. Meanwhile, Edson Barboza, the seasoned MMA fighter with a background in Muay Thai, demonstrated his exceptional skills once again at UFC Kansas City. Barboza showcased his expertise with a vintage performance. Defeating Billy Corantillo in the first round with a powerful knee to the chin, resulting in a knockout. Dana hasn't shed much light on Holloway's future after this fight, but he did say that Allen would have won if he had gone all out from the beginning. You know, he won tonight, and uh, we'll see where it goes here. And like I say, he beat a young, super talented guy that, you know, could have fought a different fight had he, had he stepped it up a little sooner. John Jones answers Stephen Miocic's provocations. Following the statements made by Dana White regarding John Jones' disappearance. For him when he John Jones came out made quick work and poof, disappeared, man. He, he went back to whatever he's doing. He, he's ready to fight, he wants Stipe, so we'll get it figured out. And Stipe Miocic's comments implying that the champion was the one avoiding the fight, Jones reappears to clarify things with Stipe and the UFC fan base. One thing that Bones has made clear is that the fight will not take place in July, and that he has no plans to retire for now. I lay low for a few weeks and then you convince yourself that I'm afraid of you. Ha. Huh. Whatever you need to tell yourself, old timer. Gilbert Burns isn't interested in Leon Edwards, he wants Colby. Gilbert Burns is eager for his opportunity at the title and has expressed his preference for his opponent. If Colby thinks he's the hardest fight, but he's the, the, the perfect fight, he's the fight that I want for so long, 
I've studied him many times, and uh, yeah, I would, I would love to face Kobe. You know, if you know, even though if it's Kobe, it might be interim. You know, because if Leo mm -hmm. is the champion, if something happened to Leo, he's he's going to be interim battle against Kobe. But I just that's one of the fights that I've been looking for for so long yeah. that I would love that matchup against Kobe, even if it's interim title. After securing a significant unanimous decision victory over Jorge Masvidal in the co-main event of UFC 287, Burns presented an ultimatum to the promotion, either give him a title shot or release him from his contract. This daring statement was well received by UFC President Dana White, who agreed at the post-event press conference that Burns would be next in line for a title shot after champ Leon Edwards faces Colby Covington. Though the date for the title fight between Edwards and Covington is yet to be confirmed, that is the matchup the promotion is currently pursuing. Whenever the fight occurs, Burns hopes to be the backup, although he's hoping his services won't be necessary, he knows who he wants to win that fight, as he's keen to prepare for his second shot at the title against Covington. Daniel Cormier warns Nate Diaz on Jake Paul fight, Jake's gonna be big for Diaz. Now, I believe this will be the biggest payday of Nate Diaz's career. And I know Nate has made a lot of money in the UFC. With that being said though, I don't know how much I like it. I don't know how much I like the fight based on two things. Jake's big for him. Jake's gonna be big for Diaz. And Jake also is improving as a boxer, but Jake can also hit Nate. And that's the worry. Daniel Cormier has cautioned Nate Diaz that he will face a grueling battle against Jake Paul. The match between the two was announced on April 12th and is set to take place on August 5, 2023, at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas. Cormier expressed his views on the Diaz vs. Paul bout in a recent video posted on his YouTube channel. In addition to Cormier, there are many people who fear for Nate, as although he has a strong chin, he is already 38 years old and would be facing a 26-year-old with a very good punch that could put him in trouble. However, there are other fighters like Leon Edwards, Andre Ward, and Anderson Silva, who believe that Nate's experience and determination make him a beast inside the cage. Silva believes that this will be a fight of timing, not power, and warns Jake to be careful with Nate, if you fight Nate Diaz, you are going to war. He's a, he's a beast, you know. When you go inside to fight, with Nick Diaz or Nate Diaz, you need to prepare yourself for war because the guy's balls is crazy. So, you know? Anderson Silva assures that the Diaz brothers changed the world of MMA with their great boxing skills and cardio inside the octagon. You, the Diaz brothers changed the game inside UFC because the guys have the best boxing and the guys changed everything inside UFC, in, inside MMA, you know, and when you see the Bulls fight, Bulls have a good cardio and good boxing. It's different. That's all for today's video. If you want to know the latest UFC news, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell, and click the like button so you don't miss any details about the upcoming fights. Thanks for watching. See you soon.